Hi, I'm Chris Dixon. I'm the co-founder of Hunch. This is Founder Stories. Um, today we have David Karp, the founder of Tumblr. Thank, Thank you for having me, Chris. Thanks for being here. Um, can you? Uh, so you started Tumblr like th what three or four years ago? Yeah, actually four years ago, February. And when you first started it, so I guess it, there was sort of WordPress. I guess Twitter had just yeah, begun. Yeah, the, the blogosphere was really pretty mature. Um, it had matured, though, to a place that was really designed for editorial publishing. So mm -hmm. kind of everything after movable type had a title, several paragraphs of text, um, a, a footer, a permalink page with comments. All blogs really took the same form, uh, which is great for that type of publishing. Um, but something that I really wanted out of my website, out of my blog, uh, was something much more free form, something much less verbose, where I could share the things that I was like working on, the things that I was just kind of coming across on the web, be it like a funny YouTube video or a photo of something I just took. Yeah. And the, the tools at the time really weren't built for that. So like Paul Graham always, always preaches that you should build something, like when you're thinking mm -hmm. of startup ideas, build something that you know, scratches your own, whatever, something you want mm -hmm. to personally use, is that kind of how, like, you basically just Definitely. built it? Definitely. I mean, way before I had mock-ups for the actual, uh, like, CMS for the publishing interface, yeah. it was all just what I wanted my blog to look like. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was something, you know, I was pulling a lot of inspiration away from what some of the avant-garde bloggers were doing at the time that diverged from I see. WordPress blogs, basically. And so you, what, what happened then? Like, you did that and people were like, that's cool, I want that too, or? Um, th that community was, I think, already sort of growing. I think there was a community of people that was playing with things that, that looked less like a WordPress blog and more like what, what a Tumblr blog is today. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, was, I started by designing my own and then started thinking about what the tool would look like to do this. And as soon as I started to think about the tool and how interesting and different it would sort of be, um, I started to see that there was maybe you know, more people than just myself out there who would get a kick out of using something like that. I see. Yeah. And then did, when you first so you, then you went off and built it, and then did you sort of get like a first hundred friends starting to use it, or how did you kind of get it out there? Yeah, um, it, it was literally friends and family that, that uh, made up our first probably hundred users. And from there, we sort of kind of by accident, a little bit deliberately, started to leverage the different communities of first adopters that were out there. Mm. So we, we first released it to this community of, of again, avant-garde bloggers, a lot of them were in the Ruby on Rails community, these people that were hacking together tools to do that sort of stuff. We showed it to them and said, hey, listen, look, we're, like, we're building this stuff inspired by all of these neat new blogs you're creating. What do you think? And the bloggers thought it was awesome. And their readers, who maybe didn't have the chops to hack the stuff together, the, together themselves, were thrilled because now they could take a stab at it themselves. I see. So we got them, then we got a few of the So a lot of those readers bloggers. were just intimidated by the existing blogging tool. So you actually kind of created new bloggers. I, I think they were really intrigued by this new format. And I mean, this was 2006. If you went back and looked at the state of, or this is sorry, early 2007, end of 2006, when we were looking at all this stuff, if you looked at blogging back then, the number of registered blogs year over year was doubling, but the number of actively maintained blogs, this was a TechCrunch stat that they put out, it's absolutely like mind blowing number. Uh, there were like 170 million blogs registered in 2006. The number of active blogs fell from like 15 million to 12 and a half million or something. Yeah. So people clearly like liked the idea of these things, wanted to blog, wanted to have a site like that. But these tools, I just don't think, work yeah. for most people. Yeah, I mean, I have a personal, like, I have a WordPress blog, I have a mm -hmm. Tumble blog, I have a bunch of them, and like, and I always feel like with the WordPress one, like, it's like kind of almost overwhelming sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's like this. It's, it's a like, commitment. You really yeah, yeah, you need to like, sit down for an hour and like hammer out a post, which is awesome. WordPress is the best platform in the yeah. world at that. Um, but for me, you know, who doesn't really enjoy writing, like, wasn't it wasn't the right tool? Yeah. And how do you think about um, Tumblr in sort of relation to Twitter, like? Um, Do you think they're complementary, or? Uh, I, I will say that we set out really not wanting to compete with anybody, um, especially WordPress and all of the existing blogging platforms. Mm -hmm. um, we've, you know, this was something that our investors obviously asked a lot of questions about early on. We share all of the same lead investors yeah. with Twitter. Um, to me, uh, Tumblr is very much about creative expression and sort of limitless creative expression. The fact that your page can look any way you want. You can tear out the Tumblr branding if you want and create mm -hmm. something that looks just totally unique on the web. You can share anything, any type of media. You can upload videos. You can upload a song you're working on, anything at all. And I think if you compare it to Twitter or Facebook today, you realize these platforms are where there is you know, some creative expression that yeah. can come through in those timelines or those feeds. Um, they're not tools built for creative expression. Right. And I, I, that's one of the reasons I think Tumblr has such a place on the web today. Um, so Twitter is sort of, I, I think of Twitter as a publishing tool. Facebook I, I is. I think about it as a communication tool, actually, more. But I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, a, a, I guess a communi one to many communicate, you call it uh, a publisher, writer, I don't know. But Facebook is but clearly. But sure, I mean, yes, you, you absolutely publish a feed. 
Um, and then so you think of that, and then Facebook is obviously like, what did mm -hmm. my old college buddy mm -hmm. have for lunch today? And they and work, then. and they're great tools. I think still looking at the state of the web, I mean, if Facebook and Twitter are two of the biggest platforms, they're incredibly limited in creative expression. If YouTube is the other big platform, it's also, you know, it's obviously got tools for expression, yeah. but still very limited in what you're able to share. Or Tumblr was really trying to open that up to people who, you know, we understand that just because you're a band doesn't mean that music is the only thing that you're going to be sharing. And I think mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons musicians, artists, and lots of creative people have really taken to Tumblr.